Well, after such a great uh, talk, I don't even know how to appear. My problem is to appear with half dignity. I was introduced. It is a great pleasure to be uh, invited to this event, uh, you know, next to such qualified uh, professionals. It's a pleasure and a privilege. This is my topic, therapy with two drugs based on NISTI in patients who weren't successful with their antiretroviral therapy. These are my potential uh, disclosures, conflicts of interest. But uh, talking about the history on uh, active drugs, how did the history of the anti combined antiretroviral therapy start? It started in the 1990s with the idea that antiretroviral therapy should be powerful enough to bring uh, viral load to undetectable level. There should be barriers against resistance in order to both bring the viral load down and keep it that way. So there's this uh, thought that, that the available drugs in the 1990s didn't have, didn't feature this. Uh, so we needed to combine them so that together they could uh, achieve this. So we created this paradigm of combined uh, antiretroviral therapy, a triple therapy with two analogues and a, and a drug of an different drug and nucleus nuc and now analog and, and protease inhibitors now we are living in the times of integrase inhibitors and the main guidelines around the world would bring um, integrase inhibitors to uh, uh, this position uh, nuc uh, analogues were i mean age did a problematic way timidinic uh, analogues be, uh, uh, the, uh, because, and I mean, the, the antiretroviral therapy success uh, allowed the uh, population to age under these drugs, but we had the demonstration that there were inherent risks to the safety of the patient, such as metabolic alterations, peripheral neuropathy, lipodystrophy, and phenomena that were associated to the use of uh, old analogues. Uh, for instance, tough uh, that started as a solution, uh, uh, no, no, sorry, not tough. TDF it started to show their limitation, particularly regarding renal um, uh, injury and osteopenia and, and, and other things. I mean, uh, a colleague used to say that uh, tenofovir might be called. A Trenefovir or something like that. Abacavir is a drug that also started with the problem for 15 years. I mean, we realized that Abacavir could be associated to higher cardiovascular risks, and in general, the main cohorts around the world collaborated with those initial findings. In addition to hypersensibility reactions, today this problem can be mitigated with the HLA test, which on one hand is not broadly available in our country. A certain degree of GI tolerance and they possibly a decrease in tolerability driven by neuropsychiatric effects on integrase inhibitor based uh, uh, regimens. The fact is that timidinic analogues started to show problems and it brought another question. Since now, as antiretrovirals were developed, uh, drugs appeared with a higher barrier and higher power. Would we really need those drugs? Would we really need such a high number of active drugs? And then we had tough. TAF, which would also be a solution, but there are some issues about TAF as well. Here we've discussed weight gain, which might not be exactly related to TAF, but may be metabolic uh, alterations and all, but the cost of TAF is important. If we think about antiretroviral regimens that can be broadly prescribed, that is accessible to the whole population, cost is an issue. Cost cannot be an issue when the drug demonstrates clear benefit, although even so, um, it demonstrates because there is a limit regarding um, resources. But, but if, if there's no clear benefit, we'll have to consider both the questions, costs and potential adverse effects. Integrase inhibitors, and here specifically Dolutegravir, showed uh, important uh, things that uh, made uh, some researchers very excited. That maybe it would be uh, possible to create a regimen with a lower number of drugs. The power of uh, integrase inhibitors are associated to a decrease of 2.5 logs within the next first two days. I mean, viral load will drop a lot, more than 99% in less than two weeks. The barrier against this kind of drug seems to be very close to those of those uh, return of 
year boost IPs. We see development studies on the, uh, the lithography year development single, Flamingo, lithography year um, spring, lithography year, lithography year, Flamingo. Uh, I mean, none of these studies of lithography failure was associated to resistance fat, uh, risk. So it is possible uh, that this drug will not demand such a large number of other drugs to create powerful regimens. Some researchers were so excited and so excited that they decided to ta try immune therapy and then things didn't work so well. This is a Blanco study, a researcher from Spain. There was another very similar study as well where patients without history of uh, integrase inhibitor failures were already suppressed to switch their regimen to the lithography immunotherapy. This study was actually associated to an early failure. In six months, we had a 10% of patients in failure, failure with resistance to integrase. So this didn't sound like a good idea. So everyone stepped on the brakes with regards to monotherapy. Perhaps we would need a little bit of something else because 90% of patients kept undetectable, but we would need something else to ensure the safety of this regimen. And then they remember the lamivudine. Wouldn't lamivudine be good even if it's a new analog? I mean, lamivudine is a miracle. It's a 1990s drug. Uh, they've already buried all of its contemporary peers. It is kept in first line of every guideline in association with real tagrophy. So it regards its statues in the museum, antiretroviral museum. It's a very different uh, drug. And then eventually we had the idea of combining this with the lutegravir. It, it started with the Gemini. Actually, the very first large study was Gemini, Lamivudine, and Dolutegravir, plus two analogs, and Ifovir, Lamivudine, and Dolutegravir. And this study showed a very high effectiveness and demonstrated non inferiority of the lithography with lamivudine versus a triple therapy. We already had this over four year uh, follow up data keeping non inferiority and with a very little resistance. There was only one case associated to integrase resistance in this particular study, and we also have Tango. Tango is somewhat more conservative in the uh, maintenance strategy for patients is properly suppressed who were randomized to keep their regimens um, versus switching to lamivudine and dolutegravir, also showing benefits, showing a already four-year follow-up, showing the effectiveness and without resistance whatsoever. Other studies after Tango, we had the salsa, including Brazilian patients. We already had a rumba as well with published data. I believe that mambo and calypso are on the way, and maybe even samba. And perhaps uh, the way we want it, it has already showed the benefit of lamivudine and dolutegravir for patients who have no history of previous virological failures and nothing that I have seen so far patients with a history of a virological failure. For patients with virological failure history, this is different. Of course, there is a certain concern. And in that the sense, this is study sounds somewhat uh, bolder than uh, Lamy Dolo without previous virological failure because this study uh, uh, published that patients failure, who failure could be salvaged, it's changing a five range with another drug, be it darunavir, dolutegravir. This was not according to what we thought in terms of a savage therapy, which would be at least two new agents. But would that be necessary with these uh, drugs with the higher barrier against the risk? It's more powerful. So Nadja decided to bet on this possibility, Nadia. Uh, studying the feasibility of this strategy, comparing darunovir to lutegravir, and in each arm, would uh, compare switch to ACT versus maintaining tenofovir. And this study was very successful in terms of maintaining maintaining the lutegravir. It was better than switching. Even keeping in mind that more than half of patients had complete uh, resistance to tenofovir, this group did better than the group without the tenofovir resistance and uh, 65R. A65R confers resistance to both tenofovir and mivudine. In this group, we had nearly 90% of viral suppression on the aldolutegravir arm and adunavir arm as well. It therefore shows that aldolutegravir needs too little. Even with the two drugs with the compromise efficiency, practically, which many authors would call functional monotherapy, what this study shows is that no, it always helps. Even tenofovir lamivudin with the complete resistance in the presence of a powerful high barrier against resistance drug is capable of suppressing virus and keep the suppression.
Here we have the, pa the arm of Dronofovy resistance patient with the wonderful results, results even better in terms of percentage. But um, there is a problem there. It's a problem somewhat different from the studies with lamivudine and dolutegravir. Uh, the risk of failures with resistance is uh, higher. We don't see this in simplification studies, but in the savage studies, we see uh, a resistance in nine patients. But we can also see that it is more frequent in arms with two new arms, Dovodine and Dolutegravir, than the arm that kept it in Ophovir. This is a risk we have to keep in mind, but the virological chance for success is much better. Uh, and then another idea, if Dolutegravir and Lamivudine are totally resistant, if they work with Dolutegravir, wouldn't just Lamivudine uh, resistant would work? I mean, these are data from an, uh, an Italian observational uh, study by Gagliardini getting no patients on uh, uh, Lamidolin who had the M4484V. So this study showed that if patients who had already been suppressed for over two years, no, sorry, were suppressed over three years before getting 3TC and dolutegravir, it didn't matter having the uh, M184V. Uh, only those suppressed patients suppressed less than three years, the risk of failure increased when you simplified to 3TC and dolutegravir with 184V historically present. And what happens in controlled studies? We have a, a, a Tango data. In Tango data, I mean, the Tango, theoretically, there should not be previous biological failure or resistance, but we went after, they went after patients with a, a cell, integrated cell DNA uh, mutation. They found seven patients with M84 V at the time of the entry in this study, although there was no study uh, history of a previous biological response. And three, or actually four, those were in the Lutegravir 3 tc and they kept undetectable to week 96, but three of those had never had biological blip at no time of study. Target not detected, TND. I mean, at least for this uh, very small group, there was no problem. Uh, Salsa did the same kind of analysis and found uh, the same results. The number of patients with uh, mutation for the analog is a more reasonable number, about 15 patients. Some of those, five of those with MA4V, and none if, uh, had uh, confirmed virological failure according to the protocol. We had a virological TNDs, but, um, uh, virological BICs, as we call it. So we even had an integrase mutation when it age, even though going to 3TCC and dolutegravir didn't fail. And we also have another study, the largest study to date, the study uh, you know, best known with the Solar 3D, uh, uh, included patients with the history of a previous virological um, history suppression, but they got two groups of 50 patients, same intervention, switched to 3TC and the lutegravir, but the groups had to have the difference. Having or not having M84V, M84V, so, uh, to compare whether this strategy would uh, make a difference in patients with and without M84V. But the study showed no difference, and the, fever, the difference it even favors the uh, arm with the historical M84V. I mean, at least for this small study, 100 patients in each arm, having M84V was not related to virological failure in the, C the group that was simplified to 3TC dolutegravir. We see that of the four, I'm sorry, of the two patients, 4% with a viral load above 50 copies in the end of the follow-up, uh, two of them suppressed without switching. I mean, all of them uh, suppressed without switching the regimen. There was no need for switching the regimen. There was no need for uh, boosting the, system, the uh, regimen. So there was no virological failure for loss of uh, power in the lutegravir 3 tc And then even with ME84V. But for viremic patients, patients in 
therapeutical failure, other strategies are thought of in order to give more comfort and confidence to both the patient and the doctor. One is allotegravir darunavir, expanding the concept of dual therapy. This strategy was tried out recently in a study recently published to D2F. The idea was to compare to Daruna versus two analogs versus Daruna dolotegravir. Those were previously failure patient in first line, they were migrated in second line, and the study was expanded to an arm that would include it in all of your FTC and dolotegravir. In the Darunavir arm, most took AZT, but that was an arm where everyone had to know for the FTC and Dolotegravir. This study, although they included a lower number of patients because of the pandemic, the study was developed just before the beginning of the pandemic, uh, COVID pandemic, it showed perhaps an even superior efficacy in the Dolotegravir Darunavir arm, at least with the two analogs. I mean, Daruna suffered with AZT, but even comparing to Dolotegravir and two analogs, there was no significant difference, uh, even some superiority to Dolotegravir Darunavir compared to Dolotegravir plus two analogs. So, so this dual therapy strategy seems very interesting and effective in uh, patients uh, in uh, viremic therapeutic failure. But perhaps the most interesting and provoking study we have on dual therapy for previously f patients who previously failed, perhaps these uh, patients of the Word 86, the patients that we uh, coordinated by the researcher, we have the privilege to welcome here, Dr. Well, uh, Dr. Monica Gandhi, expanded a little bit uh, the latitude of this uh, injectable uh, therapy, uh, therapy repivirin. This is a group working with patients at some degree of social vulnerability. That's why they are under Medicare Medicaid. And it's focused on the patient with the idea that many of these patients cannot uh, adhere to a single drug therapy. And we see that this is, I, I know that it's difficult to see, but this is a group of patients in the initial publication that would include patients, uh, stable patients uh, without housing, patients under in street situation, patients using drugs and those psychoactive substances, a group of patients that we all know it's historically difficult to treat. And 15 of these patients had a detectable viral load. They had a detectable viremia, which has to do with expanding the classical indication, which is the maintenance. You're only using two injectable drugs in patients duly suppressed. But this uh, work showed a very interesting result. Of the 15 patients in the initial publications, 12 uh, uh, suppressed virus became indetectable, and three of those, the other three, had a decrease of at least two logs. This is a very interesting result of this study. Data had already been uh, uh, published with an expanded uh, database and at CROI this year. It's a larger number of patients being included in this study. Many studies in street situation, many uh, patients using some sort of psychoactive drug. Uh, and of the, in 57 patients with viremia, 55 reached indetectable viremia. So this, theoretically, this study could not include uh, patients with uh, uh, resistance to nuke, but allowed a little bit of in resistance to integrase. And one of the patients who failed, actually, there was a lower mutation to integrase and developed some in mutations to non analogs But most of the patients were undetectable. Patients with a chronic viremia, very difficult to treat. So this is the actual concept of using those new tools not to leave any, anyone behind. That's what we must to try to do anyway. So, conclusions. Dual therapy, 3TC, the Lutegravir, a positive virological failure at first with what we have may not be as beneficiary as a most robust regimen, but it's not a disaster. There's a possible risk to high resistance to integrase inhibitors. So this kind of regimen could demand a greater uh, adherence would not to be as forgiving as others, but the savage therapy with alunavir and dolotegravir has uh, effectiveness proven, which is maybe not inferior to do analogs and PR, PI, 
uh, and uh, other analysis. But long term uh, regimens, we do not have it yet, but we will. Long action regimens act. Long action regimens are a very interesting uh, alternative for patients with the chronic um, viremia and difficulty to adapt antiretroviral therapies with the daily drugs. Thank you so much for your attention.